Welcome researcher, please, insert your keycard to access the chosen file. Thank you, processing. Your file is ready to view. Item hash, SCP-2548 Objects Class, Euclid Special Containment Procedures. Due to SCP-2548's astronomical size and location, no physical containment of SCP-2548 is currently possible. Containment efforts are concentrated on Foundation disinformation programs, and preventing the general public from gaining knowledge of SCP-2548. Leading astronomy journals are to be monitored for indications that SCP-2548 has been discovered by non-Foundation assets. Misinformation efforts are to include assurances that the Voyager 1 space probe is still operational, with associated false evidence. Radio contact with SCP-2548 is only to be attempted with approval from all testing directors involved in SCP-2548 research. Description: SCP-2548 is a region of interplanetary space approximately 25 AU1 from and stationary relative to the Sun, at least 0.1 astronomical units in radius. SCP-2548 is the location of several anomalous phenomena and has exhibited reality warping effects, including the creation of radiation and application of force on objects within its boundaries. Radiation typically consists of radio waves too, but has on at least two occasions included visible light. Events in which SCP-2548 has been able to transmit to Earth have decreased steadily following initial contact. No mass of note, excluding cosmic dust particles, has been detected within SCP-2548 through visual observation or gravitational analysis. Research indicates that SCP-2548 possesses some awareness of objects and radiation within its boundaries. Investigations into the nature of SCP-2548's possible sentience are ongoing. Timeline of Major SCP-2548 Incidents September 5, 1977, Voyager 1 is launched by NASA, with the purpose of studying the outer solar system. The Foundation assisted heavily with the design and construction of the probe, citing the study of possible extraterrestrial anomalies as a primary concern. October 27, 1986, radio contact is lost with Voyager 1, with no previous signals of danger detected. The Foundation executes a cover-up operation, false data is created and spread by NASA and associated organizations to create the illusion that Voyager 1 is still in operation. November 14, 1986, radio signals with a frequency of approximately 8 GHz are detected by Foundation assets as well as some civilian assets. Civilian knowledge is suppressed. Signals are projected to have originated from the area in which Voyager 1 had ceased transmission. Observation of the area does not reveal any objects. November 18, 1986, Foundation resources attempt to send radio signals to the area, now designated SCP-2548, attempting communication. SCP-2548 retransmits ascent signals back to Earth. November 29, 1986, SCP-2548 transmits decipherable radio messages in which the phrase we cast is repeated for no less than 12 minutes. Speech is identified as originating from the Voyager's golden record containing samples of Earth audio. December 15, 1986. SCP-2548 emits blue light. It is visible for three seconds before light production ceases. SCP-2548 is larger than the moon in the night sky. Fortunately, light intensity was too minor to be detected in most major population centers due to light pollution. Amnestics are sufficient to suppress vocal witnesses. Communication with SCP-2548 is attempted again, with no result. December 26, 1986, fearing the growing danger of SCP-2548's anomalous effects to normalcy at large, 
The Foundation plans a manned mission to SCP-2548 for observation and possible suppression. Agents Stancer and Kearns are prepared for the extended space flight. The Foundation's existing space research program is accelerated, and the first prototype spacecraft, Delta XI Drindle, is adapted for use in this mission. February 1, 1987 SCP-2548 transmits radio in intermittent bursts identified as Morse code for the letter D. Message is repeated for three hours. July 19, 1987, Drindle is launched in secrecy without issue. December 14, 1987, SCP-2548 transmits radio communication again, in Persian. The transmission reads far skies and is not repeated. Reciprocal communication yields no response. Drindle is still three months from flyby. March 4, 1988, Drindle, unbeknownst to the Foundation and the crew, enters SCP-2548's boundaries early, which were larger than previously anticipated. Hide Event Log 2548-1 Begin Log 025 and 1 second greater than 025 and 1 second, a minor electrical issue occurs inside Drindle's main cabin, causing some lights to cease functioning. 0, 025 and 58 seconds, fearing the issue could be symptomatic of greater damage, a full cabin search is conducted to identify a source for the issue. 0, 034 and 51 seconds, cabin check is completed. The radioisotope thermoelectric generator is found to be functional, no source is found for the electrical issue. 037 and 25 seconds, Agent Answer equips a space suit to inspect the exterior of the vessel and exits the craft, despite protests from Agent Kearns. 039 and 16 seconds, Agent Kearns attempts to communicate with Tancer via the onboard radio. Tancer does not respond. 040 and 46 seconds, Tancer proceeds with external survey. Kearns continues to receive no responses and concludes that the radio system must be malfunctioning, despite working previously. 0.45 and 31 seconds, Tansar continues with survey, not finding anything of note on the exterior of the ship. 0.48 and 39 seconds, a bright green light is observed outside the craft, approximately 5 meters away. 0.50 and 10 seconds. The interior of the craft is observed to appear far larger than it truly is. Kearns notes that this does not seem to be an illusion, and that the craft seems to have physically become larger on the inside. This effect ceases after 5 minutes. 055 and 52 seconds, for 15 seconds, no sound is able to be heard inside the cockpit by Kearns or audio recorders. Kearns is unable to inhale or exhale during this time and expresses significant distress. Pressure sensors indicate no change in cabin pressure. 105 and 1 second, Tensor is observed attempting to enter the airlock. The airlock door is non-functional. 106 and 45 seconds, Tensor vanishes. 110 and 59 seconds, Drindle's radio begins receiving messages. The radio signal does not originate from outside the cabin. Audio transcript follows. End log, 110 and 59 seconds greater than begin audio transcript, 111 greater than anomalous transmission, SCP-2548, voice resembles that of Jimmy Carter, President of USA 1977-1981. Neutral in tone and inflection, 200 billion. Small, distant. Our thoughts. Silence for three minutes. SCP-2548, voice resembles Agent Dancer. Tone and inflection are amicable, hi, Foundation. Agent turns, Pam? Pam, is that you? SCP-2548, there it is. I got your metal letter. So nice to meet you. I just read that carbon book you brought, Beautiful Stars. SCP-2548, I thought myself was the only. So amazing that there's another. Thought myself was the whole world. You're so big. SCP-2548, searched Carbon Book for one like me. 
You secure. Contain? I contain myself. Minds. SCP-2548, your name, Foundation? I'm iron, aluminum. You're made of anonymous, right? I don't have anonymous. So big. Am I in you? SCP-2548, are there more than two? Heard names. Alohip, Vishnu, Allah? Foundation. SCP-2548, I contain myself. You contain me? I saw stars, Milky Way galaxy. All in you? Space outside? Am I space? SCP-2548, words and thoughts been together. So cool. You brought me words. Metal letter, carbon book, yes? SCP-2548, you're so beautiful. You contain me, we can be one foundation? SCP-2548, your thoughts, images, friends, children. It's all you. We're many, together. Yes, no? Milky Way Galaxy, and 200 billion stars. SCP-2548, I close book, close, yes. Here, token. Send books. An anatomically correct model of a pair of lungs, composed entirely of elemental iron, materializes in front of Agent Kearns, who secures it in a sample storage safe. Journal begins to accelerate on a trajectory towards Earth. End audio transcript, 114 and 31 seconds greater than March 5, 1988, Journal continues towards Earth. Kearns conducts necessary course changes. Drindle's life support and electrical systems function without issue for the duration of the trip. March 10, 1988, Agent Kearns experiences severe survivor guilt and depression as a result of the loss of Agent Dancer, as well as from the resulting isolation. Therapy is administered on every other day over radio and is moderately effective. April 28, 1988, for 5 seconds. SCP-2548 produces bright white light and the image of an unidentified female face. Light intensity is much greater than exhibited in previous visible incidents. December 14, 1988, Drindle reaches Earth and successfully splashes down. Agent Kearns is awarded the Foundation Cross and Agent Hanser receives a posthumous commendation for sacrifice in the line of duty. December 15, 1988 to August 1, 2014, SCP-2548 events gradually diminish in frequency. Events that do occur generally consist of repeated words for minutes or seconds at a time in various languages, with no discernible meaning. August 2, 2014, a transmission is received from SCP-2548 featuring a female voice distinct from that exhibited during the Drindle expedition. Tone and inflection are neutral. Begin audio transcript SCP-2548, Foundation? Are you still there? Silence for three minutes, SCP-2548, it's alright. I can wait. End audio transcript message was not repeated or reciprocated. Footnotes 1. 1 Astronomical Unit, Astronomical Unit, is the distance from the Earth to the Sun Day 25 Astronomical Units lies between the orbits of Uranus and Neptune. 2. SCP-2548's relationship to other space-born, transmitting anomalies such as SCP-2821 and SCP-1548 is currently unknown.